The Halloween event in World Zero recently arrived late yesterday night, and the reception of it is alright, I guess. Overall in the event, the purpose is to collect tickets, which these tickets are to be used for getting cosmetics. You get these tickets by defeating the Fallen King, which the Fallen King is the huge boss that was planned for this event. The Halloween boss in the event had multiple different attacks and much more. However, the event did have some issues to it, which I would also like to discuss in this video. The event overall had a lot of mixed reception due to players, due to multiple issues with the game design where you had some people who liked it and some people who didn't. If you'd like, you can state your comments below on this event, which I would really appreciate. Getting general thoughts of this update is important to stay non-biased in the reporting. The event was covered with a giant door that would lead you to the event. This door led to a lot, and we'll be explaining what was behind that door in today's video. Let's get started. My name's Duke Alex, and this is our World Zero series, where I show you World Zero tips, tricks, and more. Yo, what's up, Past Junior Squad, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started in this video, make sure to subscribe for this Lilox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. Don't forget to turn on the bell so you never miss out on one of my videos, which are uploaded weekly to twice a week. Hope you all had a spooktacular evening or day, and let's get into the organization of this video. Firstly, I'll be showing you where to find the event, then I'll be reviewing the pros and cons of the event myself. You'll get to see an entirety of a perspective on the video on the, how the event will work. The event's boss, my tips and tricks, and lastly, after doing the non-biased reporting, my thoughts on the overall event and how it was staged and organized. Let's go over the event first. Doesn't matter what world you're in, there will always be a door on how to get it. This door is decorated quite nicely and cannot be missed practically. For example, World 1 has theirs near spawn near the arch and the pet station. There are multiple different locations in different worlds which can all be found near spawn. The door is decorated to say in orange text, Halloween event and features a haystack with the side on the jack-o'-lantern with the green outline to it along with the other side. When entering, you are greeted with the message, defeat the fallen king, earn exclusive rewards. Now, what I predicted for this to be the Fallen King, I did expect some sort of king to say the least. What we got was huge and I'll explain in a minute. And no, this has nothing to do with Tower Defense Simulator as Tower Defense Simulator is like a giant gem. This king is a skull. Going forward my predictions for this, I predicted that the Fallen King would have some crystal-like attacks and some sort of minions, which I was right on the second part, not the first. I also predicted that before entering this event there would be a completely new area and not just the boss, which I was correct on my prediction on that too. My final prediction for this area is that there will be your typical spawn. A bank, a pet master, and a whole area where the player can go around in, along with upgrades and what's shown at a typical town spawn. I was completely wrong in this prediction as there is only a bank. Next it reads, earn exclusive rewards. For this, I predicted these exclusive rewards would include different weapons for different levels and possibly armor, which is why I was really excited for this event. I should have known that it wouldn't really be viable because they had to pander to all levels, which made it harder to get armor or exclusive things, so instead it was replaced with cosmetics. Anyways, shall we step in the door? I think so. Moving in, we see that there is an area called Spooky Card here, which is an area in itself. As we can see by the image, it works like a haunted house area with pumpkins everywhere. A lot of pumpkins LOL. The Spooky Card here, it seems like an area when entering and has a lot to explore. Over here, we can see our teleport. Our teleport system, as you all know, can take you back to all the other worlds. Over is an orange world style 5 bank. You can see that the bank is near a cash shop, and near the cash shops are aura chests, which includes spooky auras that already cost you and will be until the end of the Halloween event. I personally have the bat Halloween event item, so I think that's cool. Then you can find something called a prize wheel. Let's explain what the prize wheel is, so that way you all know. The prize wheel is where players can spend tickets earned by the Fallen King. You get one per chest, which is when you defeat the Fallen King, it will give you a prize ticket. Now, here's where the big issue starts to come into play. They didn't really estimate how big the queue would be to actually get tickets. The wheel is constantly full with other players, which leaves sometimes players have to get 15 minutes up to get their spin with tickets. When spun, it will give you cosmetics. These cosmetics can include a toxic dye, a new hat, which as you can see, my character is wearing a gas mask from the event. I have two, and it's a rare cosmetic. Dyes and cosmetics alternate, but it's more likely that the spinner will land on a die. Continuing forward, how they didn't estimate it was a huge problem because there are too many players in the queue, meaning don't cash out all your rewards at one time, you're going to want to cash them out all at once. The queue also glitches with the wheel, meaning some player doesn't receive their rewards. Probably the most controversial part of this event. This event's spin wheel, some argue that the prizes aren't effectively worth it because they are cosmetics and not actual weapons or swords, which is what a lot expected from this event. Now, let me explain why this wouldn't work. Each weapon comes from each different world where there are around 5 weapons to collect, each in different rarity for each class for each world, or around 3, something like that number. Adding all these weapons in an extremely short period of time would not only be 
viable, but at the same time, I completely understand the player's frustration in the store. Armor, however, would have been more practical to be given out because armor can have different levels and all classes can wear armor no matter the class. A lot of players were expecting that during the event instead of cosmetics, which cosmetics don't really do anything to your avatar except make it look cool. So if you kind of skipped over that card, some of the controversy in this event comes from players wanting more than cosmetics. The second part that players are concerned about, let's address now, the moment you've been waiting for, the final boss, Mr. Fallen King. Welcome to the stage, old friend. Absolute star of the show, but definitely needs dentures. I mean, jeez, look at his teeth. Yikes. The fallen boss comes as a final boss, which you need to defeat in order to get tickets. To show the final boss, the final boss looks creepy. They did an absolutely amazing job at making the boss look visually scary and a spoopy scary skeleton. Now, let's go over the Fallen King's attacks, shall we? Getting in the queue, there are around 10 players that can go in the queue. However, this number usually ends up being 3. A lot of players leave when they get frustrated at this boss, which causes the boss's level to either go up or down depending on the level average of all the players. Unfortunately, it's usually out. For example, when a player leaves, the boss just goes up or down too. I think it's not a good tactic that wasn't needed and the boss just should have stayed the same. The boss in itself is not difficult, it just takes very long. If players leave during the event, this is why it takes so long. So always go with the better team that you know is going to stick there. Depending on this level, the boss can do varying amounts of damage. However, the boss has different attacks, so let's go through that. Its first attack is an orb attack can, uh, can be used against the player. He'll spin around like a charged boar wolf. To dodge this attack, you'll need to go to the outer edge of the arena to dodge it as the circle slowly moves inwards. Be careful, this is an extremely powerful attack that can diminish most of your health. After this, minions will rise known as ghoul knights. You might remember them from the final world 1 dungeon, in which ghoul knights cannot install fear in your character, meaning the character cannot do any attacks until it's over. Ghoul knights are particularly easy to defeat. Up next is the character stop hacks, which are just normal attacks that will do medium damage. This usually happens when the character is up and around. Next, you'll pick up a clock, and this clock will come soon. This clock with it, the boss will just sit there, and from the boss sitting there, you've been cursed. To defeat this curse, you're going to want to defeat the card, which is skeleton just like him. You're going to want to find the guard by going over to the stream where the magic leads and defeat that guard. In the later rounds, the guard gets bigger, so please just be careful. It comes elite, depending on the level. Step in when the white pentagram to be healed from the curse. When he reaches the second half, he'll move on to the second stage, in which in the second stage, will teleport you to a lava type map like the one shown in World 2. First attack that he'll do is a stop-like attack with multiple different points. The next attack he'll do is a branch-like attack that will come out of the ground like the tree boss. These tree bosses will take a big blow to your health, so try and avoid them. Next, the boss will slam a sword three times, which again, take a big blow, so please be careful. I cannot stress it enough. Looks like a hexagon with its next attack, which is like a Tommy 1, 2, 3, and that's all for our boss. Our boss will be defeated, you'll get gold, and a prize ticket. With this prize ticket, you'll find yourself a fancy new cosmetic for your avatar. Overall, what do I think the pros are for this event? I think this event did an incredible job with the cosmetics, but I do feel the event needed rework in terms of the boss. The boss needed rework that if someone leaves, the level should not change unless it's a level 75 or a very high level such as myself. This makes it extremely unfair if a player leaves, the boss heals, and then it gets harder, causing a lot of players to get frustrated and quit. I know I've been kept a couple times where everyone left because someone left and the cycle continues. Next, I believe an issue that needs to be addressed is the spin wheel, which instead of a queue system should have two or three wheels which would help to divert the system. I think if I were to rate this, I would rate the event a strong 6 to a light 7. It wasn't my favorite, but I know Red Manta worked hard in this event. Thank you very much for watching my video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. See you in the next video.